No, there, there are multi-layered things that are going on simultaneously, and, and uh, you, know, you have to be aware of them all. We function on two levels simultaneously, the microcosmic and the macrocosmic. And the microcosmic is ev we're, we're responsible for every note that's on the page. We have to play every note. And sometimes that effort is, is so strenuous that we have very little space left in our heads for the macrocosmic, which is the piece starting at the first note. And whatever the adventure of that piece is, you know, mounting, releasing, mounting again, whatever, whether it's a minute and a half or an hour and a half for a Mahler symphony. I've even gotten to the point where I call every piece is an adventure in anti-gravity. A different adventure in anti-gravity. Because we are, we are conquering gravity as we, as we make music. Music is movement. The, mo the moment music stops, gravity takes over again. So the rate at which we move, the energy that it takes to move, whether we move like a mudslide or we move like, like uh, Niagara Falls, it's still, it's still movement. So I, I think there's, uh, and I uh, already explained this, I, I think there's a physical analogy to the microcosmic and the macrocosmic, which is how I get young people to sit still when they play. Because I think a lot of this body English that goes on is counterproductive. Because of all the competition out there, I think that, that young people think that the, the more they show how much the music affects them, the more likely they'll be to sell tickets over their colleague in the next studio who doesn't move. And yet that becomes a distraction to the listener. It's a very delicate line that the, that the performer treads. We live in a, in a, in a society that wants stars. We're, we're star starved. <laughs> In the making of music, the performer is not the star. The music is the star. The performer is the vessel. The performer is the channel through which the music passes as a prism and comes to the listener. We are indispensable, you know. Without us, there ain't no music. You know, until that time comes when people can, can walk across the street in Carnegie Hall and walk in, and instead of being given a program, a printed program, be given a score, and they take the score to their seats, and they sit down, and they open the score, and they read the score with all that pleasure and joy of hearing it, <laughs> the way a musician should be able to do. Until that time comes, we are indispensable, but we are not the star. And again, dear old Schnabel said it beautifully. He, he said the performer is like the alpine mountain guide. He knows the way to get you up to the top of the mountain, and he takes you there, but his purpose is so that you can enjoy the view.